Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today we are going to have a quick look at Antics 19 Beta 3. This is just the beta release, but once we get into a Beta 3, we're pretty close to what the final release is going to be. There are a few little uh, little odds and ends that they're trying to resolve. And uh, But what we're going to do here is if you are new to this Linux distribution, we're going to talk a little bit about what it happens to be. So uh, Antics is based on Debian, so the 19 is based on Debian 10 Buster, the latest release of Debian that is, just has come out. So all these Debian distros are updating their code base to Debian 10. And uh, this one does not have systemd. So if you are one of the people that does not want anything to do with systemd, this is going to be the distro for you. It also runs on a series of window managers, and so we don't have a full desktop environment set up, but you can run this on a very low spec PCs. In fact, I did acquire an old PC here, but it does turn out that it, it will not boot. So sad day. I wanted to see how Antics actually worked on it, but I really can't, unfortunately. I could build a virtual machine of similar specs, but I don't, don't know if it's going to be the same. But regardless, um, if we head on over here, uh, one of the great things that they have here is that uh, they are excellent to use uh, as a live CD, whether we are doing live CDs uh, or a live key with modifications, without, with persistence or without. There's a lot of tools that make this a very logical choice to keep around if you need need a, a basic live key laying around, maybe something to fix distributions or to carry around with you. I usually would use Tails for that, but you know, if you don't need something that connects to Tor and things like that, this would be an, an a, uh, option. Of course, I do say that, that they would recommend at least 256 megabytes of RAM. Bonus. Uh, that's actually pretty good. But we do need 2.7 gigabytes of, of disk space. So I don't know. This produces in me cognitive dissonance because my very first computer had 32 megabytes of RAM but 1.6 gigabytes of hard drive space. So I could not install this on my first computer from 1990s. So that is so sad. So I'm not sure we're going to revive that one. But that circa 2005 PC I had laying around, man, if I could get that thing to actually boot up, that would be that would be epic. But eh, we'll see. We'll see what happens. Maybe it's just the type of monitors I have. I don't know. Maybe I should just try the different monitors and things like that. Maybe I'll go down to the surplus store and buy one of those old monitors from that era. See if that actually causes it to work. Yeah, then we'll just bring it back if it doesn't. Say, hey, resell it. I don't care. <laughs> anyway, that would be fun to try. Uh, let's see. And what else do we got? So, of course, this is the documentation about the uh, Antic 17. We are looking at the 19, which is the beta 3 right now. So it's based on Debian Buster. It is system D free. Now, I'm not specifically system D free. I have yet to see any compelling reason why I shouldn't run system D. You know, NSA spy! I haven't seen evidence of that. Bloated! Hmm, maybe, but processors can handle that. I don't know. Um, we do have, am I reading that right? That says kernel 4.9. Is that 4.9 or 4.19? I thought Debian was 4.19. Um, but they do actually say they have an easy installer for, uh, so I guess it is. I guess it is 4.9 uh, because they do have a, they do have uh, kernels available for 4.19 and 5.2. So I'm not sure why we have such an old version of a kernel. I mean, that's about what I'm running on my Linux machine right now. So, you know. Uh, let's see. That is your that's your 32 and 64 full base kernels. Um, so you can get this with um, uh, for your 32-bit systems as well. So that let's go ahead and uh, jump on into having a look at the installer. And I want to show you what this guy looks like here. Okay, so here is our boot screen. So we have the full, we have a safe mode, we have a virtual box video, fail safe boot, a boot from hard disk, memory task, uh, and switch to grub bootloader. So let's go ahead and boot into the first option, which will get you into your system here. So the install is right here on the desktop. So when we boot this guy up. I thought I did that yesterday. Maybe I did that after I installed it. I, I couldn't remember. Uh, anyway, um, so we we're going to boot this guy up over here and um, click on the installer on the desktop and we can change our keyboard settings. Of course, it already has it set to US, so I'm okay with that. So go ahead and hit next. 
We have the run partition tool. We can do a custom install on existing or we can auto install to the entire disk. We can choose to, to encrypt it and we can also choose to leave a certain amount of space open. So we're going to say yes, go ahead and do this. Now, what I like about it is it's starting to run the install on things even before I'm done setting everything else up. So we can decide where we install our uh, grub menu. So if you do have extra hard disks in your computer, you can choose where to put it, what disk, what type of partition. So we're good with there. And then our computer name, that's just fine. If I were actually running this, then uh, I would get to the point where I might want to choose what I wanted to do. Setting your system clock so we can choose our um, 24 hour or our 12 hour time. We can select our time zones over here. So we're basically walking through all these settings while it's already in the middle of installing. Now we have our username set up. So let's just do, and then we're just gonna do a super secret password. I'm changing my super secret password so I don't forget one again. I forgot one on those Debian installs, if you guys remember, that was fun. All right, and then we can show passwords. We can do auto logins. We can save live desktop changes. So anything that we changed on the desktop. So if I got into the desktop and I made any modifications, I can click on this button and it will save all of those to my installation. So go ahead and click on next. Now we cannot go next until this is done. There is gonna be an extra step here that we have, but you can kind of see this is all real time, how quickly this guy is installing. And uh, we have all of our tips are done. Everything is good. So the fact that this installs so well on this virtual machine setup, tells me it's probably going to give you a decent uh, configuration, a decent ability to run on uh, on anything else that you're trying to install it on. Maybe that super wicked old computer might be a little bit longer. Now, according to the developers, this will actually also run very well on a USB 2 device. And uh, that's actually pretty monumental because trying to run Linux distributions off of USB 2 devices is usually a little bit more difficult. So there we are. Uh, we didn't have to edit out the video or anything. Uh, we can automatically reboot the installer when we uh, reboot the system when the installer is closed. So let's just go ahead and do that. And so here we are uh, on the reboot process. So we're going to go ahead and hit enter and this should kick the drive out of the virtual machine. And then as we boot up, now we are actually on our, uh, we are actually on our um, grub menu for this particular Antic installer. So we'll go boot this guy up and then we'll have a quick look. Okay, now this is one of the downsides is this uh, login is quite a bit crazier. We don't have any mouse control, tabs don't seem to do anything, so we have to actually type things, hit enter, type your password, hit enter. That's a little kind of goofy to me, but um, it might be a little bit goofy to you as well, but hey, that's kind of what it is. All right, so here we are on the main desktop. So it's nice and clean and simple. And of course we are running window managers. And so we're not running full desktop environments. And this is what saves a lot of the memory. So right now we are using one zero to 1% 1 of our CPU. And we are using 167 megabytes of RAM. So if you're looking for something super lightweight, hey, that's about as lightweight as you get. Now you actually do have the choice of which Windows managers you are using. If you come over to your desktop, other desktops, you see we have some Fluxbox options, we have ICE window manager options, and um, we have uh, JWM. Now I am not a Windows manager guy, so I have no earthly idea what these guys are but I think this might be ICE. I wish it told me which one it was, but it can just kind of show you that when you change these guys, it's gonna change your desktops around. Now, some of these actually do not have the context menu um, options, and so you wanna be aware of that. So you can just kind of flip through these guys, decide where you wanna see things at. So there's our rocks panel. I think that might be ICE, yeah, so ICE is what we started on. So you actually have the ability over here also to turn on or off Conky, so that's kind of our settings over here that'll tell us the information. So we'll go ahead and uh, turn that on. We also have the 
rocks panel on or off. So there's this is a nice panel here where it'll have um, a lot of different things. So there's your application. So here's a list of all of our apps. We have our settings, we have our web browser, and of course our file manager. So you can kind of see this is what these window managers do. They'll kind of stack things up like this. Uh, so if I can remember, I don't I have no idea how to actually close those. Ah, no, they're everywhere, and I have no idea how to close them all. I said I'm not. Uh, I don't actually use these, so I can't remember exactly all the details. I think what it's doing is so there. Let's just go ahead and get rid of the uh, rocks panel there. That's what it did. Is it put my close button over the top of the panel? So that's one of the things that you uh, get in here and you tweak your settings and your systems. These are very good when you spend the time to learn how to use them. So over here uh, we have applications. So we have uh, basic tools inside of this. So USB maker, we have the kernel updater. So if you did want to go for a new kernel, we have this. So system is not live USB. Okay, so apparently we can't do anything with that because we're not a live USB. Okay, ISO snapshots. This is going to make a snapshot of your system. So if you wanted to create an ISO image, you can do that. We have command line, we have uh, CH root rescue. There's a package manager. Under our accessories, we just have some of the basic, uh, basic accessories that you might need. We do have CD burners. Here's other desktops. Let's see if does that give us uh okay, yeah, so this actually gives us the ability to choose uh, to choose individual desktops there as well. Games, we have DOSBox emulator, nice. We do have LibreOffice on here. If I remember correctly, I think LibreOffice is version 6.1. We'll go ahead and boot it up. So we have HexChat, GFTP, Clause Mail. We have SM Tube, Poor Man's Radio Player, nice. MPV. Couple different extra YouTube videos. Let's go ahead and boot up a LibreOffice. See which version we have here. Your applications. Also under preferences. We'll get into the preferences in a second. All right. So about LibreOffice. So we are at 6.1. Let's see if our spieling checker works. Looks like our spieling checker is working. We do not have our extra plugins though for things like your synonyms and things like that, but uh, that is, uh, that's okay. That's probably something we can work with. Now other things that we have under our applications, under our preferences, we have additional drivers. So we do have a driver utility tool. So if you are fighting with different hardware, you do have the additional drivers. We have an ad blocker, which I believe is configured by default, I think. Let's have a look. I think that's what the developer said, it was configured. Um, I guess not. So let's go ahead and just crank all these guys on, turn these on. And usually what this is doing is it's adding settings and options into the hosts file to block ads on the host file level. So that's very cool to have that as well. Uh, we have uh, firewall configurations, just a variety of other tools as well. All right, so the area where uh, here's various themes so we can there's so many different theming options you can pick so you can see that we're at clear view uh, clear view blue medium is what we have and the last place is really where we have our I got to find it now let's just go to our control center all right so inside of our antic control center this is where we have a lot of the power so we have uh, font scaling DPI we can customize what the look and the feel of everything looks like. So here's all these different uh, options here. I actually really like the way it looks out of the box. I think it's it's pretty sweet looking. So I'm going to keep it where it is. We can change our widgets. We can change all of our color schemes. So you can um, you can uh, use a customized color style. I think you can. Should be able to. Oh, it's not available uh, without X session as a session manager. All right. We have to turn on the X session manager. Here's our icons, mouse cursors. So you'll see that it's not the most user friendly. That's actually okay. 
Uh, this is not necessarily designed. If you're new to Linux, you don't want to be running this. Um, this is an excellent um, distro if you're familiar with it or if you're trying to learn more about under the hood. So here is your default application. So what is your default terminals, web browsers? You'll see that everything here uses these desktop files. So if you wanted to change these, you got to find those desktop files. And uh, that is that one list that we had on the rocks panel at the top. We can also edit our Conky Manager. So this is going to open this guy up. So if you want to change, for example, the position where it's at, you can uh, comment this out. Let's do maybe bottom left. And as soon as you save it, it should reset. And that should move it. So there it is. It has moved. I actually really liked it where it was, though. So let's go ahead and just put it back there. And then you can go in and you can change your color themes and, and stuff like that. All right. Uh, we have under our system, we have a package manager as well. So we have the full synaptic over here. We also have, I think, the package installer. This one is your managed popular one. So if you're kind of new to Linux, this is probably the one you want to go to first, where you can come in here and you can look for things under an individual category. So under browsers, we have Firefox ESR. The, so the gray means it's already installed. We do have the ability to install Google Chrome if you're that brave. We do have Waterfox, we have Chromium, several other browsers here as well. So it's actually cool to see a distro with so many browsers available. Here's your audio. So this is uh, giving us all of the a variety of just different tools. So if you wanted to install a full desktop manager, you can go ahead and do that. Um, excuse me, a desktop environment. I said manager for some reason. All right, email. We don't have evolution here, but my guess is we can install it under, um, uh, we can probably install it under Synaptic is my guess or just under the terminal. Okay, there's some kernels. Here's LaTeX if you want to install LaTeX. So you can see that we have uh, a very nice uh, a very nice player uh, here in terms of the the uh, package installer. So the manage packages is your full synaptic. Your package installer is just this individual, um, the most popular packages that you have. Here's a startup services. Okay, so we can come in here and choose our startup services. And uh, this is changing our startup level. Uh, let's just quit that one there. Hit Q to quit that one. Here's your network tools. Here's your shares, individual sessions. Here's your live USB maker, image partitioner. So it's a lot of tools inside of here. Um, a very nice setup overall. Uh, if you want to get started on Windows managers, I would absolutely say this is going to be your best place to start out. So they just have uh, so many settings, so many options. The installer is just perfect. Um, and... Everything else in here is just, just very nice. Of course, the only issues you're really going to have are the fact that it's a Windows manager and not a full desktop environment. That may throw some people for a loop. Oh, look at that. Windows 95. This is, oh, God. This is, we liked this stuff back in the days. Man, we had problems, didn't we? Anyway, um, there is Antic as a very quick look, just the install it, a walk through some of the basic settings. And uh, let me know what you guys think about this uh, in the comments down below. All right, so we are back to Antics. And this was actually something that was very interesting. Somebody in the comments here, uh, Alex, said in the comments here, um, said, Antics is a communist. Just look at their bookmarks on Firefox. So uh, if you caught the live show, you know I did not do anything here. Uh, we just booted this guy back up. Uh, we just finished recording the video on this. So I said, all right, let's go ahead and have a look. So um, now Andy Capalista, I believe, is the username of one of the main developers. We have uh, links to a variety of... Now this is a um, this Greek, I'm guessing. Um, I mean, I can read like Koine Greek, but not that quickly. Uh, we have Democracy Now. 
We have Counterpunch. New Left Review. Monthly Review, Independent Socialist Magazine, Lenin's Tomb, Jews Sand Frontier, Anti Zionist Blog, The Angry Arabs News Service, The Marxist Internet. Archive, Noam Chomsky's website info, and Radical Philosophy. Well, that pretty much does it for me for, uh, for antics. Um, any questions? <laughs> I think that we know exactly what we need to do with this guy here.